So tell us about your pictures, because I think you use these, don't you, yes, in your yes. workshops? Yeah, it's the thing I got punished for most at school when I grew up in this country in the uh, late 1950s. Lots of detentions, a number of canings for drawing in class when I should have been listening. But I've drawn a teacher here just relaxing over a cup of tea or coffee, thinking about his or her class and the challenges of that class. And on the day, every case example, every case study uh, that I try to role play in front of the group, I'll try to role play the actual behaviour of the teacher and even the kids, which is a bit tiring, but <laughs> will be supported by a picture of some kind. For example, before when I was talking about kids calling or budding or fiddling with objects or listening to iPods. For example, this lad here, Daniel, when I walked up to Daniel, this is about two months ago back in Australia, it was on task learning time, I'd finished whole class teaching time. I was cruising around the room doing micro teaching, chatting with the kids at the table, asking them how I could help them, where they were up to, is it making sense? Now I walked up to this lad and there must have been about three kids like Daniel with iPods or I, you know, smartphones listening to music. School rules clear, we don't have iPhones or iPods on in class. And I walked up and I, and I went like that, you know, just to non-verbally cue him and he took the earbuds out and stuck them in his pocket. And I said, it's Daniel, isn't it? He said, yeah. I said, how's your work going? He says, it's all right, it's okay, sort of, you know, yeah. I said, where are you up to? He started to talk about it. I said, is it making sense? He said, sort of. I said, tell me about it, because I don't teach this particular subject. I'm here as a visiting teacher working with your class. And he started to talk about the subject, uh, about the work. After a couple of minutes, I said, uh, all right, do your best. I'll be back a little bit later. And just before I left, I gave him a directed choice. Your iPod, I want you to put it in your bag, or if you like, leave it on... Uh, leave it on your teacher's desk till break time. So the first thing we do in that tiny transaction about an issue about phones or things that are distracting him is not to walk up and say, give me that iPod or give me that mini skateboard or give me the key ring or whatever they're mucking around with. The first inter part of the interaction is to become a teacher. You know, talk about the work. You know, how's it going? Where are you up to? Check his name, Daniel. And just before I left, I said, I want you to put it in your bag or on, on your teacher's table till break time. And then I walked away to give him take-up time. I said, I'll see you later. So I gave him a task reminder that I would be back. So even in that tiny transaction with one boy, Daniel, there's a lot going on, particularly in the way that the teacher enters the social space, the audience who are watching this kind of behaviour close by, and also the fact that it's his possession, his little smartphone that he's listening to his music to. Now, Daniel was reasonably um, cooperative. Other students in the class, one student said, oh, come on, I can still work with him. And I said, I'm sure you can. Partial agreement, I'm sure you can. In our school, though, the rule's clear. Now, in your bag, or if you like, get him back to the primary issue quickly, not the secondary behaviour. I don't care if you can work with it on. And I don't care if every teacher here lets you do that. Once we start arguing like that, we're moving further and further away from the primary issue at that point. And the other one I often get kids uh, saying to me is, other teachers don't care. They'll even name the teacher. Oh, you go and ask her. She doesn't care. Like you ask Miss Davis and that. She doesn't care like if we have, like as long as we get our work done. And my standard response to that is, even if you teach, I can check that with your teacher. I'm not sure if your teacher cares or not. I can check that with your teacher. Even if that's the case, the rule is clear. I get back to the primary issue. The rule's clear. In your bag, or if you like, leave it on my table, on the teacher's table till break time and I'll come back and see how your work's going soon. And by walking away and giving take-up time, eight out of 10 kids in very difficult schools I work, as I walk away, the sigh goes up, and you can see them almost just behind your back as you walk away, you can see them putting it away, I'll put it away then if I have to. And all that stuff is what we tactically ignore. We don't go back and say, listen, when you put it away, you don't make a song and dance about it. We don't feed that secondary residuality, which is all part of his social posturing that he may not be aware of, you know, the sulky, pouty eyes or the ceiling stuff. And again, if you watch a, a confidently effective, not cocky teacher, please, the way they interact is to keep that sense of calmness, but still keep the focus on creating a teaching and learning dynamic that's not easily distracted by iPods, you know, toys or inappropriate chatting or calling out or whatever it is. So the, the, the course with Osiris is very much 
every case example that I've drawn that I'll be talking about on the day will be modelled. I'll, I'll try to model it out to unpack the elements of the skill. Uh, and people obviously have chance to bring up other case examples. Mm. And I'll draw while I'm working too, because obviously I like to draw. So yes, that's the way we work.